Ladies and gents, welcome on in to episode four, Landers Lounge. Well, we're off to England today uh, to catch up with uh, two ex Highlander lads and uh, James Haskell and Big Lima Sopoanga. How are we going, boys? Really good, really good. I was waiting to see if Lima was going to speak first. Uh, yeah, obviously, always me stealing the, stealing the thing. Yeah, really good, actually. Um, very odd time, obviously. I think everybody starts every podcast or. Um, kind of you know conference call with a bit of a surreal time but actually I'm trying to make the most of it really trying to stay fit um trying to better myself every day just try to, otherwise you just you know you blink and the day's gone trying to avoid a lot of day drinking because my wife keeps popping her head around the corner going do we have a bit of wine tonight a bit of wine tonight I'm like babe go away stop trying to offer me wine because I've got no willpower so if I don't if I know it's there I, I, I can avoid it if someone offers it I'm like yeah wine time um DJing a lot, doing a lot of stuff on, on social media, but honestly, I'm actually okay. I'm not, I'm not too bad. And you, Sops, how's it all going with the fam? You've obviously got two young ones. It'll be a madhouse, I bet. Oh, bro, it's a madhouse, man. You know, like, the kids don't care about time, eh? Like, it's five o'clock get-ups, you know. Sometimes they don't go to bed till 11 o'clock just because they going to sleep or whatever. And so it's just, just them, bro. And at the moment, uh, my oldest, Miller, she just loves doing races. So I'm racing up and down my corridor um, in my kitchen probably at least 100 times a day, just having races back and forth. Um, so it's good for the speed work, bro. Uh, but apart from that, yeah, like a bit like Hass, bro, just trying to keep busy. Um, yeah, just a bit of baking here and there. Not that I do anything. I just clean up all the mess that the kids make. Um, <laughs> bit of a sous chef, you know, just get told what to do and where to go. So that, that's about it for me, bro. So, Lames, you, you, we're into, we're heading into the full, our last week of lockdown in New Zealand. Where, where are you guys at in terms of lockdown? You fully shut down like us over uh, Yeah, pretty much shut down, but we just got extended another three weeks. Oh. So it's another three weeks of lockdown, bro. Yeah, well, it's, it doesn't sound like it's going too well over there for you guys. But, yeah, anyway, yes, I mean, obviously, you're keeping yourself busy with your podcasts. You want to give any of them a plug, any in particular? I'm, I'm a fan of uh, Joe Rugby, personally. But um, any others that you want to give a plug, mate? Um, yeah, I mean, look, obviously, the House of Rugby, I think, is, um, you know, it's going down really well. We've had some amazing guests the last few weeks. We had Matt Hampson on, obviously. Uh, he famously broke his, his neck. Um, you know, he's kind of set up his, his foundation. We have Rory Best on, Sean O'Brien. We've been pretty, you know, pretty full. We're trying to get, uh, I'm actually trying to get Ben Franks on, um, who's kind of my business partner. Because uh, I find, you know what, when I first met Franksy, I wasn't sure that we were going to click, you know, in terms of like, he's not really the, the mayor of Chatmandu. Like, you're not, you know, you don't think he's going to be like <laughs> talk, talking at like 100 miles an hour. But he is one of the funniest people. I've ever met and one of the best people, like one of the most professional people. So hopefully we're going to get him on to give a bit of a Kiwi, a Kiwi angle. But my main kind of thing that I'm working a lot on is my, my, my music, my DJing and stuff. So I've got a house music show. Uh, it's great for people training at home um, who, you know, even want to have a party Saturday night, kids gone to bed. Um, you know, you can put, put some tunes on. It's called Back Row Radio. It's available as on iTunes for free and on Mixcloud. So just search James Haskell Back Row Radio. It's house music. It comes out every month. Um, and it's, uh, it's going down well. We're on episode 10 and we've had 600,000 downloads. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy about that. Obviously, you know, people must be liking my music choices, even though when I was a player, I did get abused for having a very house music tint. There was a lot of boys who wanted the, the hip hop vibes, but, you know, I was saying, sorry, lads, none of that yes, nonsense. You'd be, that, you'd be that DJ, though, behind the decks mixing it up and then whipping the shirt off and really getting into it like <laughs> so, so, you know, well so you say this right i i everybody the first question everyone asks is do you dj with your shirt off i'm like <laughs> no no i'm a professional but the best thing was is that i went to i went to my my mate asked me to dj at his wedding in italy right and it was like a, it was like a mega wedding and so all the lads have been like, oh, DJ Hass, fucking getting your shirt off. And I was like, A, my name's not DJ Hass. And B, I, I never <laughs> DJ with my shirt off. I, I promise you, within 20 minutes, right, there's a shot of me, shirt off, rig out, right, dancing with the, the bride on the shoulders of another mate, holding her hand while we're mixing. It's the best photo ever. I, I, I'll send it to you. I'll send it to you guys. It was just ridiculous that's the only time i've ever dj with my shirt off i, I tried to keep it on these days because you know, also 
because I haven't left the house. There's been no manscaping going on. I've gone for the more rugged. I've gone for a more Dan Eden look, you know, ear hair, <laughs> big, big beard, nose hair, just a hairy rig, farm us out. <laughs> Oh, beautiful, mate! Oh, mate, you'll have to take us yeah, a little bit of a DJ mix at the end of the end of the um, end of the podcast, mate. That'd be bloody good. Lee, Wait, Hess, can I ask you a quick question, Hess? Yeah. Um, you know when you did that podcast in I think it was Wales or whatever, and you rang all those famous people. Was it was that yeah. actually like, genuine when you rang that chick? You know the famous act- actress? Yeah, yeah, Caitlyn um, Jenner. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, well, so, so I did. So I basically did the. Um, I did the. I'm a celebrity. Get me out of here with Caitlin, and and her and I become good friends. Like we speak probably every couple of weeks. She's amazing. Uh, but the problem is every time we do this, um, you know, FaceTime challenge thing. The first time we did it, uh, you know, I've met. I'm not, you know, one of these. I'm not particularly famous. I've met many famous people, but there's a couple of people I met along the, along the way. So the first time we did it, I tried to call Tom Holland, Spider Man. Right, and I, I'd messaged him, and he, he'd agreed that he was going to answer. He pied me; he's never spoken to me again. Um, a Nicholas, Nicholas Holt, the guy from um, uh, uh, what's it called, X Men? You know, the Beast from X Men. He's a lovely guy. He said he'd answer the phone. He didn't answer the phone. And then Mike Tyndall <laughs> called up um, Jamie Dornan from um, I can't whatever movie that is. And uh, you know, my wife was on stage. You know, I had a meltdown because she fancies him so much. I completely lost. So then we went to Wales and I was like, ready again. So I'd messaged loads of people. First person, Caitlin, guarantee Caitlin Jenner, you know, uh, one of the most part of the most famous families in the world. Oh, really? She didn't answer, she didn't answer, right? <laughs> so then I was like, and then I thought, do you know what? I'll call, I'll call Eddie Jones. So I called, I thought. I thought I'd call um Jody Kidd. She didn't answer, right? So and then and then uh, Tyndall just goes, gets his phone out and goes, ah, oh, don't worry about this. Beep, calls up Rebel Wilson, who answered within 30 seconds and was like, and did a live thing. And then all the other lads called up, like Alan Jones, the Welsh captain. Mate, nobody answered. I was like, and then as soon as I drove out, Caitlin Jenner calls me up. She's like, hi, James, how are you? I was like, Caitlin, you, 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 you know, you're an hour late. Like, what are you doing? She's like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I was like, this is <laughs> so that was it. <laughs> So, oh, it was true, and I lost again. Oh, yeah. Brilliant. It's yeah, good stuff, brilliant. brother. Yeah, you two met, obviously, through the Highlanders back in, I think, was it 2012? Did you come over, Hess? No, yeah, no. 2013. Because we had was that. Oh, I, season. Down, I, I came down in 2013, so Hess wasn't there then. No, it was the season before oh, yeah. you had the horrible season. Yeah. You know, we got we just, just before the playoffs, and then basically, you instead of like... Jamie having all like the hard working guys, he went like glitz and glam, rolled in the rolled in every free agent ex Kiwi bloke in the world, and it just went boop. And then and then the next season, the next season you went back working Battle City and you won the whole thing. So, you know. Yeah. So Hess, can you just give us a rundown how that how that all came about? You coming to the like the bottom of the South Island and playing for the, the little old landers, mate. Well, it's, 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 it's a really interesting story, actually. So I, um, we had the World Cup in 2011. It didn't go very well. Um, there was a lot of like uh, controversy around the World Cup, especially in Dunedin. Um, there was a, uh, someone who worked in Dunedin who basically made up a whole story, tried to throw us all under the bus. It was a bit of a nightmare situation, like legally. Um, and so, we, so we, I basically had a contract already signed with the Rebels, bizarrely, in Australia. And after the World Cup, the Rebels just called me up and said, look, we've talked, we're going to tear up your, your, your contract, right? And I'd, originally, I'd, um, uh, I really liked the Highlanders, and I, I know it's going to make people sick, but I'd obviously over here admired the Crusaders, like Crusaders, Highlanders, you know, and, and I knew um, Todd Blackadder at the time. I'd met him a few times. He was interested maybe uh, with Daryl Gibbs and maybe, you know, doing something with an English player, maybe. So I got talking and um, Jamie Joseph uh, actually met Martin Johnson in a gym and got asking about me. And they sort of said, you know, what, what do you think of him? And he said, look, he's OK. He's a hardworking guy, everything else. And Jamie basically called me up um, after my agent spoke to him and offered me like zero money, like basically no, like no, no money at all. And I, I basically thought, do you know what, if I'm going to go and play Super 15, why would I not go to one of the, you know, one of the toughest uh, places are in New Zealand with one of the, the, you know, the, the best rugby in the world, with one of the teams that is with a, one of the biggest histories, one of the most famous teams, all these players. Um, 
and I agreed. And basically, I went to Japan, so I earned some good money. But I think Jamie was impressed by the fact that I just decided that I went there for no money, to, to essentially, you know, to just almost like pay to pay to play, really. And um, and I basically <laughs> I agreed to, agreed to do it, and I and I and I and I moved down, and uh, it was. You know, it was an incredible kind of invention, and I, and I never, I never, never looked back really. But it was, it was just one of those real things where, you know, I had basically not, I had everything sorted, and then after the World Cup, everything got torn up, and basically the Highlanders stepped in last minute. Um, and then, interesting enough, uh, Scott Berger broke, did his knee for the Stormers, and they called me up after the day I had signed for the Highlanders and said, "Oh, by the way, we're now interested. Scott Berger's out for the season. Would you come?" And I said, "Sorry, forget the sunshine." Forget that, you know, everything else. I'm going to Dunedin. I'm going to live in St. Clair, right next to a couple of cafes on my own with Battle of the City in, in, in you know, and, and have the time of my life. And, that, and honestly, it was one of the best experiences of my life. I loved Dunedin. I loved the Kiwi people. I loved my teammates. Um, and, you know, I just, I basically just used to spend my time going from to New Zealand Fight and Fitness uh, with uh, Ryan and, and the boys. Ryan. Uh, yeah, yeah, St. Clair to the cafes, Salt and Starfish, just alternating because, you know, and I was living in Mapasua's house, which I was too scared to, we'll come on to a story about that, too scared to break anything in case he killed me. Um, and, and and just basically to Tamati Ellison's house and to the stadium, and that was it, Forsyth Bar. I was just doing laps. That was all yeah. I ever did. Yeah, nice. Lou, so that was, what, 2012? You guys had just started that, that whole sort of the Jamie era had started in 2011. When the hairs yeah. turned up, was he sort of just, when you started doing 12 rounds of, of 10 down and ups, his, his eyes would have just watered, wouldn't they, mate? <laughs> but Honestly, when he turned up, I was like, who's this guy? This guy's out the gate, like proper, like in the gym, like 24 seven, like he was doing like, before we would start our sessions with Dell, he would full on already be in a full sweat. And I was just like, <laughs> like I was a young at the time, you know. I, I what like nineteen, twenty. I'm like, what the f is old dude doing? Like, like he's doing like old all these dude. Stuff. <laughs> I was like twenty. I was like twenty eight or something. Like that. Yeah. You know, like I was like, who's this dude? He's freaking stacked. He's so freaking beasty. And I was just like, this guy's out the gate. But like after being in England for so long, like I understand. You know, like he was coming from England, where you know, like the guys in here love their gym, like strong they you know hook into it you know beach muscles and all and Haskell's just like oh yeah sweet I'm just gonna come and pump all this iron I was just like wow this guy's crazy he's he's something else yeah how did you find like that side of it has like the the environment side of the Hollanders did you, did you like the, with the boys obviously would have gone on really well with a lot of the lads I mean, look, I, look, I'm one of these people that um, every time we have anybody on a house rugby show, right, the, 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 the standard answer that any other player that I've ever played with or known comes on and goes, I thought I'd hate James Haskell. I thought he was a pr I was going to punch him <laughs> in the face. I wanted to punch him in the face. I thought I would have an argument with him until I met him. And basically, you know, wherever I go, you know, I sort of come in and, you know, people either think they know me or, or whatever. And I, I walked into the Highlanders environment and everybody welcomed me. Everybody was lovely. Whether they liked me or not, I don't know. But I pretty much got on with everybody. Uh, I never, I didn't really have any like hierarchy or cliques. Obviously, like you know, Elliot Dixon and, and Lima um, and uh, Toulouse and a few guys were, were slightly younger. But I, you know, we would we would still we would still hang out. We'd do things. I just thought it was brilliant. I love Jamie's mentality of creating a family with like the dog tags and being part of something. I think he was he's one of the best coaches I've ever worked with. Um, and I thought his kind of approach to everything and the whole brotherhood and the whole kind of idea of of you know working very hard together and and actually the Highlanders was much more like a Premiership side than. Uh, any other side it, you know because Jamie was you know much more focused on on fitness much more focused on physicality whereas a lot of Kiwi sides you know obviously you know one of the big difference going over there was that um, you know everyone's at reaction over here the first thing they do as young players to pick up a weight in New Zealand everyone picks up a ball you know your boys are playing one touch playing touch club rugby is really important in England you know originally when you're younger it's about size and everything else so I went over there with a real open mind and just thought, what an amazing place. Um, but yeah, I, I still maintain my, 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 my training, as, as uh, Lima said, but I kind of 
you know, changed my mentality really. I loved the way that Jamie approached training as opposed to such drill based stuff. He was very much like playing through things, you know, doing that. And I, I had so much fun and all the boys could, you know, welcomed me and I went, you know, Matt, I went hunting with Hori. That was insane. Ronnie tried to, tried to take me diving, uh, but I was, oh, I, was Ronnie. Too, I was scared, too scared to do that. Um, but I basically with everybody like, Adam Thompson, Reef, we were DJing with him. Tanity was taking me on family stuff. Or he was taking me shooting. He took me duck shooting at his, at his, at his, at his uh, brother Charlie's farm, which was incredible, mate. I had the best time. Honestly, the best time ever. Oh, it was brilliant. Brilliant. Well, Lance, we're, we're, uh, we're going to have to wrap this up pretty soon because um, I obviously haven't paid for the, uh, for the, uh, the upgraded version. And um, obviously, times are tough, so probably... Uh, need to wrap this up pretty soon. I wanted, I wanted to cover off, obviously, the Lions tour uh, down to Dunedin when the Highlanders tipped you up, Hess, but just a quick word on that, and then, uh, and then we'll, we'll have our last questions about Wasp for you, uh, uh, Lima. But, yeah, the, the, the 17 tour, uh, Hess, just a quick word on that, mate. Yeah, it was amazing, to obviously, to come back and play the guys um, and get an opportunity to, to, to go to the stadium and, like, kind of relive the memories, you know. I think... Um, you know, I'm very lucky to have gone around the world and played with guys like Lima and, and, and made friends and then to get a chance to go back and visit. It was a shame, you know, because I thought we were going to do a job that day, but obviously we let it, we let it slip away, um, which, was, which was a shame. But look, you know, it was important for us to, uh, you know, the midweek team to, to get some wins. You know, we beat, we beat um, I can't remember who, we, we, we beat the Crusaders, didn't we? And we beat the, um, the Chiefs, obviously lost to... to, to um, you know, to, to the Highlanders, and then and then we and then we were, we absolutely pumped the Hurricanes, and then and then they they managed to get a draw. You know, like I just so it was a bit frustrating, but actually it was great to be back, see some you know see some familiar faces, catch up with uh, catch up with a lot of the lads, meet some of the new players. Because the thing with this in, in, in Super Fifteen is that squads turn over quite quickly. You know, especially in New Zealand, there's always a superstar off the conveyor belt. So you know, you sort of see these players, and then you kind of come back and think, who do I know? And then. There's like half the squad's missing, but it was great to, to, to be back there. Yeah, nice. And you, Sops, obviously with Wasps now, which is Hess's old club, which, I don't know, how many years do you spend there, Hess? 12 in total. 12 years. How are you enjoying it, mate? Like, obviously, um, it's been a challenge in terms of the team from what I've been seeing. Yeah, it was, it was pretty hard adjustment, um, obviously coming from the south to the north, but obviously I've got, um, yeah, I've gotten used to it now and sort of gotten um, involved with sort of the boys and kind of, you know, really involved myself in the culture. And then obviously I've got um, got some good friends here, you know, Muller's come, who's a bit of a character. Uh, Jeff's come, who I went to school with. And then, you know, Brad's obviously been here, but the guys are great. There's been some awesome guys that I've made some lifelong friendships with that I'm you know, pretty happy, pretty happy about that. And, and before this coronavirus, I think we were maybe two points off top four or one point off top four hitting against Northampton. So the boy turned the season around and things, there's been a few changes at the club. Um, but yeah, as if this sort of pandemic didn't kind of, you know, hit at the time it hit, I think we were hitting some good form and, and the boys were starting to, you know, really, um, really enjoy, enjoy playing their rugby again. And I think, yeah, awesome, mate. Well, I wish you all the best if you get back on the field. Well, as is tradition for the um, for the four episodes that this podcast uh, vlogcast has had, we, we like to name an, an all-time Highlanders 15-plus coach. Um, I'm going to start with you, Lima. But while he's going, Hess, do you mind just going over to your DJ booth and just maybe sparking something up for us just to, just to send this podcast to the next level mm. so that we um, sort of finish on a high note, mate? I don't, it's all turned off. I see what I, I see. What I got. I might be able to play one song or yeah, something. Well, a bit of a song. Right, right. Right, Lima, I'll let you. I'll let you go with your team while he's a, while he's away, mate. You're, you're 15 plus a coach. Uh, number one. Um, yeah, Doogie Edmonds. Two, Anton Oliver. Three, um, Josh Honick. Four, Jared Hoyada. Five, yourself, because we need a guy to organise the piss ups. <laughs> Six, uh, Schmilliot Dixon. Seven, Josh Cronfeld. Eight, uh, the Nacho Man. Uh, nine, Aaron Smith. Ten, Tony Brown. Eleven is going to be Kate Pocky. Twelve, Sean Treby. Thirteen, uh, Muller. 
14, uh, 14 Weiss and 15 Bensmith. My coach would have to be, yeah, it'd have to be Jim Joe. Yeah, nice, mate. Good side, good solid side, especially like the locks. Very mobile, yeah, mate. skillful. <laughs> <laughs> right, Hask, I'm looking forward to your team, mate. Obviously, um, probably not, uh, don't know all the all the players in Highlanders' history, but I'd understand you've got a pretty good understanding, so I look forward to. Uh, yeah, I've got a few, I've got a few people. I've basically gone for a, a drinkers and battlers 15, essentially, um, kind of characters. Like juices, on. Juices. House of rugby. It's more like a bit, it's like a bit, no, they're more like ones, ones that you would have a few stubbies, get a little bit crazy. Um, you'll start number one, Whopper, Andrew Hoare. Uh, Carl Heyman. We had uh, Jared Hoata, who was our number four. Uh, we had Guzzler, mate, absolute Guzzler. Mate, the Guzzler's a, a hero. The stories from the Guzzler are unbelievable. I never forget how excited he was when he invested in a, uh, a sausage business. Uh, he was, he, 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 he think he was going to be this time next year, he was going to be a millionaire involved in, in um, cured meats, but. So just I think to that clarify, that, that, that's the Guzzler, the brother of the actual Guzzler. Uh, sorry, the cousin. Yeah, of yeah. The actual Guzzler. The cousin of the Guzzler. Yeah, it's not. It's not the decent. Oh, it's, not it's, come... the, it's not bro. It's, yeah, it's not bro retallic. It's the other retallic. Just yeah, the Cal- actual Guzzler. Cal- Cal- um, um We've got um, Adam Thompson. Uh, obviously, if you'd heard the stories, he's the puppet master. Great right <laughs> on the piss for for a little bit. Very cool bloke. Get you into good clubs. Uh, number seven, John Hardy. Um, Nasi Manu. I mean. That guy just goes for days. The guy's invincible. Um, and obviously, incredible story, you know, to overcome, you know, cancer, doing in the way he's done it and to get to play again was, was, was amazing. He's a real inspiration for me. Jimmy Cowan, um, number 10, Tony Brown. Party when Tony Brown's in town. You know, the man, you know, sorry, Lima, but the guy's a legendary piss head, um, you know, and, and, and ran the best parties in the world, apparently. Uh, Marnonu, mate, you know, he can go hard when he's souping it. You know, he's got a big engine on him. Uh, Tamati Ellison, you know, a good friend of mine, loves a little jar. I mean, when I was in Japan with them, uh, you know, the Kiwi boys had the most amazing city of Tokyo, but the Kiwi's idea of a night out was to sit in a changing room doing a hermit half dozen. I was like, lads, this is the te- this is like Tokyo is the nightclub capital of the world, and you lads want to sit in, a, in separate rooms drinking beer on your own. So that was surprising. Um, Cade Pokey, obviously, because he's fast hands, and Talisa. Bianu, uh, obviously, he's absolutely killed it over here. And uh, Siali Piatal, uh, you know, especially you've got to take a man like that who looks as cool as he does with his hair. It's like super glued down to one side. So that's my, my battler team. Very good 15. Very good 15. Very different <laughs> contrasting 15s, but very good all the same, Hess. Very good all the same. And it actually go pretty good on the footy field too, mate. Yeah, not bad, not bad. Great, but big money after bill that though. You know, you need a good team <laughs> yeah. manager to to keep the the Highlanders credit card away from the bar. <laughs> right, mate. Is that uh, DJ? Is that DJ? Uh, yeah, it is. Yeah, I'll, uh, up? I'll set it. I've just got. I, I, I just set it up. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah.